Right. Um, good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. We are so excited to be back here tonight to continue with what God wants us to do as often as possible, to just fellowship together and to to pray and have a moment of just waiting in his presence and just enjoying his presence. Amen. And it's always a fulfilling thing to to come. I was in church this morning and I was so sleepy. Like I slept almost throughout the service. And I was like, well, I'd rather come and sleep in church than to sleep at home. Yeah, so it's just such a great moment when we and believers get together to worship. And so we are going to start this worship service tonight uh, in prayer. If you want to lift up some prayer concerns to the Lord, if you want to commit some brethren, we just want to pray for this uh, end of year season. And it's just so important. We can't overemphasize the importance of praying, intercession, and just calling on the name of the Lord when our hearts are heavy. Amen. So I am going to sing us one song, and I think all of us know that song. It's just going to be the chorus. And then after that, I will begin by calling um, Brother Glenn from where he is sitting to pray for the sick. Amen. And then after Brother Glenn, I'll call on Sister Pascaline to pray for the end of the year. And then while that is going on, we will, I'll call some more people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand up, please. Let us stand. Hallelujah. 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 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for giving us another day to be able to come into your house and lift up the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we know that this time of year is a celebration of when Christ came down to this earth and born in a manger and was willing to come and sacrifice his own life for our sins. And Father, for some reason at this time of year, there's also a lot of sickness and sometimes a lot of death and Father, for those who are saved, that's good, Lord. That's okay because they're coming to their final home. This place is just a temporary home for us who believe, Lord, this is not our permanent home. But, Father, for those who don't, we, we just pray that something during this time of year would be said or done for them, that they would see Christ and what Christ is all about. And so, Father, throughout this Christmas season, help us as believers to be witnesses, to be ready to share what Christmas is all about with those who don't know you. And, Lord, we just lift this up to you and pray that you would guide and direct us. Let the Holy Spirit speak through us, Father, mm. so they're not our words but yours. And, Lord, we thank you and praise you for this day and for the blessings of, of life and breath that you have given us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Pascaline. You can be seated. If you can't stand for too long, you can be seated. But if you can stand, I don't mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne to say thank you for this year, 2022. We want to thank you so much because from the first second of the first day of January 2022, you have been with us up to this moment. And everything that we have seen accomplished in this year has been your doing. Every day of our life, we have seen your handiworks in our lives, your hand of protection, your provision. Father, your guidance, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that has been with us. Lord, in all, we say thank you. Even as we had celebrated this moment of thanksgiving, trying to recollect all that you have done for us, and taking stock of your goodness towards us, we will never cease to say thank you. Father, we thank you for your body, the church. We thank you, O oh Father, for the leadership of the church. We thank you, King of Glory, for the diggings. We thank you for every single member and their path that they play in serving you and serving one another. Lord, we want to thank you for giving them the grace, for giving them the wisdom they needed, for giving them the understanding, and for helping us to walk together, even in unity and in love. Yes. King of glory, we want to say thank you for all the Sunday school teachers. We want to say thank you for using them to pass your message and your word to us. Father, we want to thank you for all the children workers and the time they have sacrificed to teach our children. Lord, we say thank you. Father, I want to thank you for those who work in the kitchen and the time they spend preparing food, oh God, even when we do not think about it, to serve us on Wednesday nights. We say thank you. We want to thank you for those who sacrifice, even to prepare for the men's prayer breakfast. We thank you for every single one. And the people that clean the church, we say thank you. We thank you for the members that open the doors of the church and close them even when we leave without thinking about it. Father, I want to thank you for providing for the church, oh God, to run and pay the bills that we use in the church. We say thank you. Father, during the pandemic, you saw us through, and we say thank you. That King of glory, it has been your doing, that you watch over us. In our going out, in our coming in, you have been with us. Many of us have traveled to different places, yet you brought us back safely because you're the God of the sea, you're the God of the land, you're the God of the sky. Everything in nature obeys you. And we thank you because when we depend on you, you direct our path. You direct us. You protect us. King of glory, we commit the rest of this year into your hands, asking that whatever is left for us to do here on earth, even for the month of December, that you will give us the grace to go through it successfully. If it be in your will, God, we pray that as we live every day, we will uplift your name so that you will draw men unto you. Father, as we celebrate Christmas, we pray that as our brother prayed, we'll be a witness. That we'll take advantage to tell many that are lost about you, Jesus Christ. That they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
We pray for our family members, those that are not yet saved, that, Father, in your own way, you walk a miracle and that they will come to know you. We pray for our co-workers. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our friends, people we hang around with, that, Lord, they will see the light in us and they will come to know you. Father, again, we commit this service into your hands and we ask you to have your way. Lord, we pray that everything that we do here will be acceptable unto thy sight. God, if there be any iniquity in us, Holy Spirit, we ask you, who searches the heart, that you will cleanse us from every unrighteousness, that, Father, as we lift up our voices unto you, it will be acceptable unto you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace that we enjoy. Thank you for your presence, even with us now. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You see, if we are truly connected to the realities of our society today, we will realize that a lot is going on. And we also, we can't be indifferent as a church. We have the responsibility to stand in the gap for for our country, for our people, for our youth. I remember Apostle Paul telling Timothy that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of sound mind. I want to call on Sherry to pray for our young ones and for many people who are going through mental challenges, mental issues that kind of manifests itself in different ways, in murder, in mass shooting, in suicide, that God will help our people to have sound mind, sound mind. Sherry. Jesus, um, I just come to you tonight, um, and dear Lord, just like Innocent said, um, we were even talking about it today um, during Advent time. Um, dear Lord, we know why we enter this season. Um, Jesus, we come here because of you. Um, but dear Lord, um, so many people have been deceived um, by Satan, and it's just become a holiday. Dear Lord, we've removed Christmas, and it just continues to be further and further away from the actual reason that we celebrate it. Um, Jesus, I just pray that you will just help us um, to display um, the light that is in us um, with our actions so that people do see a difference in Christians and wonder and are drawn towards you. Jesus drawn towards the light that, that what Daniel said this morning that um, we purposefully take actions um, dear Lord as we invite people um, or reach out to people um, dear Lord during this season and just really taking advantage of um, dear Lord uh, what Christmas is really about and the opportunities that we have and the events that we have even if it's just to come here the children's program um, Jesus people will be receptive to hear children uh, because they're cute but then they'll actually hear the gospel. So I just pray that um, you'll just give us a sound mind and a, a clearness and a discernment of how we can um, reach people that are so vastly lost, especially in our workforce. Dear Lord, I do pray for our children as um, <clears throat> the deception isn't just um, with, Chris, with Christmas and with holidays, but dear Lord, just um, the morals that we have in our country, um, dear Lord, and just how far removed we have become. Um, even tonight uh, at dinner, we were talking about um, you know, how wicked Noah's time must have been and how we compare to that time period. Um, dear Lord, are we as wicked as they were? Um, have we come to that level, um, Jesus? And it's almost unfathomable, but, um, but we just don't know. And so we just don't know when you will come and rescue us just like um, the people of Israel waited for the Christ to come as we wait for you for your second coming. Um, Jesus, I just pray that you just really help us to um, guide our children, dear Lord, um, with all of the morals that are corrupt, that are against the Bible, um, dear Lord, um, even um, within our government that um, we get emails that say that um, everything is okay as far as any moral that you want to believe, and dear Lord, our children are being bombarded, um, and the school, school system is with that, so I pray as Christian parents and Christian grandparents and Christian um, friends and elders within our church, Jesus, um, dear Lord, I just pray that you will just help us to have um, a spirit of influence that they will listen to and see, um, dear Lord, what is true and what is right. Um, dear Lord, I pray that they not be uh, misled or, um, dear Lord, um, become desensitized um, to what sin really is, Jesus, and how it goes against you. I pray that you just 
give us wisdom and how to raise our children, dear Lord, so that they will grow up and follow you and love you all the days of their lives um, and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dear Lord, we just pray it's just so difficult during this time, um, dear Lord, and um, as it just becomes, it seems more difficult and Satan becomes um, stronger, dear Lord, in the world, I just pray that you just um, help us, um, dear Lord, during this season to really um, pull you out of um, all of the busyness and pull you out of um, the presents and the visits and um, the food and dear Lord um, help us to as we just celebrated Thanksgiving to give thanks to you dear Lord and help our children to see that so that they will be raised in you will remain in you dear Lord and um, we'll just continue to spread your word and dear Lord we just love you we just thank you for the service dear Lord I thank you for our, um, just for the the sense of honesty that it brings I feel like to our church um, the sense of openness, the sense of sincerity, um, dear Lord, it is just such a blessing. Um, and dear Lord, so I just truly um, thank you for Innocent and for um, Raphael and for their families that lead, dear Lord, this. It's just, um, it, it is, um, it is a, a work, it's a job, dear Lord, to, um, to serve you. And I just thank you for their willing hearts, um, dear Lord, and just the, even the visitors, as this is a holiday weekend, and so we know so many people are traveling, but even the African um, visitors that we've had, that we've seen, um, Jesus, I just pray that you will just help us to be um, a light on a hill right here in Lexington, and I pray that um, slowly people will just um, flock to that light like moths do, dear Lord, and they will come and, and hear you and uh, about you this Christmas, and we just love you, Jesus. Amen. Brother Raphael, will close this prayer session by praying for the African service. We want not just that we will have more people here, but that it will be more impactful and reaching and transforming to those who come into our church. You want to pray for this service, please. Mighty everlasting Father, we call you Father because, God, of the truth, you are our Father. Our existence comes from you. And Father, we recognize you and we make our declaration that we cannot live without you. There is nothing that we can do, O oh God, without you. We are dependable forever unto you. We want to thank you so much for this church and all the various ministry. We want to thank you for the leadership of this church. We want to thank you, Holy Spirit, how you are moving in our church. Lord, we want to thank you, O oh God, also for this, this service. We pray and entrust it, O oh God, in your hands. Father, you know why this service has come to be in this church. Lord, it is not for man. It is not to show off. It is not, O oh God, to, to show off to the world that we are able to do this. But there is a reason, O oh God, why the service has come to this church. And Lord, we pray and entrust it in your hands. You are God, Jehovah Almighty. That heavenly Father, you, O oh God, will lead. You will direct. You will give an insight, O oh God, to this church on how this program or this service is going to be moving forward. Dear everlasting Father, we believe that this mission, there was this, this service, O oh God, specifically, uh, targeting this, this group of people, but not also limited only to this group because a church of God, it is Christ's church and not for a particular people. So we are praying that Heavenly Father, you will use this service to reach out to so many people in our community here. More especially those who don't have places to go. Those who don't have churches. That Father, you will use this service to impact their lives. Yet Father, we are depending on you. We are clueless on what approach to take. We are clueless of what innovation to take. Father, we are making ourselves, O oh God, open unto the leadership and guidance of your Holy Spirit to direct us in the rightful path. So that, Lord, at the end of it all, you alone would take the glory. Lord, it is your work. May you do your work through us and glorify your name in it. We know that Heavenly Father, it has not been easy. We know that the devil also has been fighting. But Father, this is your battle. 
and we are giving it in your hands that God, you fight your battle to glorify your name in it. We just pray that God, every obstacle that is on the way, Father, that you take care of it. Every difficulties that we may encounter, we pray that you take care of it. Every hardship, oh God, that we may face, you take care of it. Every opposition that we may face as well, that God, you take care of it. Father, one thing we know is that nobody can battle with the Lord. The devil tried some 2,000 years ago and he was crushed on your cross. So therefore, Father, we do believe, oh God, that nobody, no one will fight against you. Do your work in the way that pleases you. Once again, just want to thank you so much for the leadership of this church. Just want to thank you, oh God, for the dynamic thoughts and thinking of our pastor. How you give him this broad spectrum of vision, how he sees through, oh God. Lord, just bless him and bless the leadership of this church that it will continue to grow in that way. May you bless this service. Even as we look forward to relaunch again next year, oh God. Lord, do your work. Go ahead of us, Holy Spirit, and do your work. We just want to thank you for this evening and thank you for this session. And just pray that you continue to guide us throughout the service, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Can you give a clap offering unto the Lord for what he is doing in Broadway Baptist Church? Amen. We thank God for his work in this church. We invite the praise team to come up and lead us with a few praise and worship songs. And then from there we'll move on to the message. You see, prayer time is we can start praying and we think, oh, we... Before we know it, one hour is gone, and we are not gone, and we still feel like we want to continue. Who, who thought we shouldn't stop? I, if I felt like we should keep just, just keep moving from one prayer point to the next. It didn't feel any boring to me at all. Amen. All right. Praise Jim. Yeah, so we will, because of, we want to catch up with time, we'll just sing one song, we'll collect the offering, and then we'll go to scripture reading. There we go. Good evening to everyone. I miss you for the past two weeks. <laughs> I love you. Awesome God, mighty God, we give you praise. Awesome God, we give you praise, mighty God. Mighty God. Over you are highly lifted up. Awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. You are highly lifted up. You are highly lifted up. Awesome God, awesome God, you are highly lifted up, mighty God. You are highly lifted up, you are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. You are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, you are a mighty God. You are highly lifted up, you are highly lifted up, awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. You are highly lifted up. Mighty God. We say you are highly lifted. You are highly lifted up. Awesome God. Awesome God. You are highly lifted up. Mighty God. Daddy, you are highly lifted up. Awesome God. We make a you are. Highly lifted up, you are a mighty God. That you are highly lifted. You are highly, 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 high
mighty God. Oh, you are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. Highly lifted. You are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. What the marvelous God, what the marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for me. What the marvelous God, what the marvelous, is He doing marvelous things again? Hallelujah. What the marvelous, marvelous, marvelous God, God. What the marvelous, marvelous God. God. He has done marvelous, marvelous things for me. For me, for me, for me, for me. What the marvelous God. What a marvel. He keep doing marvelous things for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for the many hands that are deep into the pan for you. We pray that it will be used for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be reading from the book of uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10. 2 Peter 3, from verse 1 to 10. I read. 2 Peter chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10. I read. This is the epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophet and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this, that there shall come the last days, scoffers walking after their own loss and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all the things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and, pre and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day it's, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but, but his long suffering is towards us, is towards but his long suffering to us would not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to re to repentance. But the day of the Lord come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away in a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth, and also the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is the reading of God's word. Good evening once more. I 
consolidate miss you all for the two weeks that we've not been together. <laughs> but I know we've been together in the, uh, in the other services, but this service, uh, the African service, I really do miss you all. Um, I just want to thank God again for another opportunity. And I just pray that uh, we will not give up. We keep on trusting God because um, uh, the scripture says that anyone who puts his hand on the plow and look behind is not fit for the race. So we will not give up. Amen. We will not give up. I want to begin by sharing a short story that is a true story that happened in my life. And this is connecting to our word today. Uh, to this message, and the topic is stand firm on God's word. Stand firm on God's word. I think in 1992, I had my first uh, a holiday job, and we did what they call peace rate. So they gave you, you were being given wages as per your output. And I remember our supervisor, he went, it was a banana plantation. He went and gave allocation to all of us. When he gave the allocation, he assigned all of us to our various tasks, and then he left. He told us that he would be coming back to inspect the work. Well, it so happened that the weather was so bad. It, 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 it stormed that day so bad. And you know when it's about to rain, this heavy storm, how the place will be very dark, wind will be passing, and, and all the scary stuff, wind branches will be moving and all those things so it it scared me a lot it scared me and the guy our team the guys that we were working together well they were afraid and then they talked to each other and then they left well i said i will stay and do what you know do my own piece of job and then i wait for the supervisor well guess what the storm prolonged to a level that i could not longer bear i could not stand again to wait anymore so because I was left alone, places were dark, I became so scared, and then I also, like the other friends, I abandoned the work, and then I left and followed them, okay? What happened was, later on that day, the supervisor came. When he came on the field, he met nobody. But one thing he could remember was, he knew that different, he knew where each and every one of us was standing. So, based on our output, he gave us, he paid us for the little piece of work that we had done. Of course, you know that such a small work also requires a very tiny little pay, which we are not happy with it. And I say this story to plug into our lesson today, that stand firm on God's word. There is a little bit of uh, 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 argument about Second Peter, who actually wrote this book. Some theologians, they say, well, it was not written by Peter, and they gave all excuses, but this was written actually by Peter. So as we see in the first verse that has been read, uh, in that chapter 3, chapter, uh, verse 1 of chapter 3, Peter wrote to, he wrote to the church. Now, in chapter 1 in, uh, uh, of this passage, it tells us, 1 Peter chapter 1, it tells us that Peter actually wrote this to the Christians who were in diaspora all over the place. And so it is likely that this second letter that he's writing, it is still pertaining to such people, which also we are also inclusive. So he wrote in verse 1, he says that, Dear friends, this is now the second letter I have written to you. In both letters, I want to stir up your sincere understanding by the way of reminder. Let us pray. Dear Father God, you gave us this word for a reason, to guide us, to teach us, to train us, to direct us. This word given to us, they are your word. Father, may you bless this word this evening and may they make meaning to our souls, to our spirit, to our own understanding. And give us, O oh God, the power, O oh God, to stand on this word and to live by it, to glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want us to repeat this verse, Psalms 119, verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Okay? You repeat after me. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. 
very, very important. If we don't know the word of God, the world that we are living today, you will be talked out of the truth. Unfortunately, today there is just something, there is an adulteration of the truth by people who don't know anything about Christianity, who don't know about the word. We have a lot of false preachers today. There is just a proliferation of preachers today. They call themselves apostles. They, 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 they baptize themselves with all kinds of names that befit them. They call themselves apostles. Some call themselves uh, uh, bishops and all those names. And, you know, they comport, they carry themselves to a way that, you know, whatever they do, they, 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 they lure people in their, their wrongful teachings and, and, and diverse people's mind from the true teaching of the word of God. And the most caring thing is, I don't know how people allow themselves to be so easily brainwashed from the truth. That is, people who have known the truth, as we are going to see in this passage. So it is important for every child of God to know the truth. That is why, as a Christian, you, the Bible actually is our authority, not man. Not man. The Bible is our authority. That is why it is important that anytime as a Christian we come to church, hold your Bible. If anybody wants to talk to you about Christianity, about God, let them hold the Bible because we can only understand if as you are preaching and you are quoting those verses, we, we reason together. Because if we don't do this, if we don't do this, some of these people are so well trained and they are equ eloquent in their presentation to the point where they can easily talk you out of the truth. Now, Peter actually, there is a concern that is going on. And that is why he wrote this second letter. This second letter he wrote to remind them. He says that, dear friends, he calls them dear friends because he, he, he loved them. He cherished them. He said, dear friends, this is now the second letter I have written to you. In both letters, I want to stir up your sincere understanding by the way of reminder. So, there is something that is going on. As a matter of fact, the book of Peter, Peter wrote this to address some false teaching that was going on. The book of Peter was written so that where some wrongful doctrines crawl into the, into the church. And so he was cautioning the Christians, listen, that wherever you are, listen, this is your way of life. Hold on to the truth. Don't listen to all those false preachers and those false doctrines that is going on. Look on to the word of God and stand on it and live by it as the Holy Spirit died guides and directs you. Don't anything short of the word of God, that is not the truth. That is why the book of Peter was written. It's like there is, after some time, the people were becoming compromised and complacent to doctrines that were not correct, to teachings that were not correct. So the second letter, he writes them to remind them again of the truth that has been taught unto them. And that is why it is important. Christ says in his word, meditate on the word of God day and night. Meditate on this word day and night. So Peter referred to this episode as the second letter he had written to his readers, the first which being First Peter. In both letters, Peter reminded his audience not to forget the teachings they had received through the prophets and apostles. The teaching which Peter spoke, including accepting Christ's return, which had been rejected by the false teachers. So therefore, there was this group of people, we'll see them, they call them scoffers. This group of people who were rejecting, they, don't, they did not believe that Christ would come again. They did not believe that Christ would come. To them, that was just a sham. To them, that was just a waste of time. To them, there is, there is no reason for Christians to be waiting, you know, that you're waiting on the Lord. To them, that was a sham. So, Paul, Peter wrote this to tell the Christian that, listen, look unto the word of God and don't look, listen to what people say. Now, when we go down to verse 3 and 4, he says, no, verse 2, he says that, so that, the recall, so that you recall the words probably spoken by the holy prophets and command of our Lord and Savior, given through your apostles. Now, listen to verse 3. It says, above all, be aware of this. Be aware of this. When somebody, it's just like us parents, we tell our children, be careful. Be aware. The kind of friends that you work with, the kind of things that you watch on TV, the kind of places that you go, be careful. It's like giving a warning. When you hear be aware, it therefore means that there is an eminent danger if you are not careful. There is an eminent danger if you are not careful. So he told them, he said, be aware of this. In that verse 3. He says that be aware of this. He says, scoffers will come in the last days, scoffing and following their own evil desires. 
Listen, church, it is not only in the last days. When he spoke about this and said in the last days, it applied even that time when he wrote this book and today and even tomorrow until Christ tarries. There are scoffers who are out there who are deceiving people, who are talking people their own doctrine. And Peter says, because of their evil desires. Peter warned his reader that scoffers will come in the last days. Now, who is a scoffer? Who is a scoffer? Well, I look the meaning of scoffer through Google. <laughs> this is what Google says about scoffer. Google tells me that a scoffer is someone who laughs and speaks about a person or idea in a way that shows that they think that person or idea is stupid or silly. And it fits into our lesson. So someone who laughs at you that either your idea or what you think is foolish and it is silly. That is what scoffers they do. They mock at you. Now, I don't know about you, but I have been mocked at as a child of God, as a Christian. I remember when I gave my life to Christ, my very best friend in school, when I told him that, I said, Simon, listen, no more. I'm a different person. You know what he told me? He said, well, Christianity is for those old people who have enjoyed their lives and have become old. Then now they are serving God. They are doing that Christian thing. So you are still very young. Why would you throw your life away, waste your life away from enjoying and, and you want to live like those old people? He was coughing and laughing at my belief, right? That's what scoffers do. Scoffers, they will tell you, you have been praying and praying to God. Where is that your God that you have been praying and trusting him for this particular thing? Where is he? Where is that your God? You have been trusting God for marriage. You have been trusting God for a child. You have been trusting God for a job. You have been trusting God for this or that or that. They will laugh at you. Don't waste your time. Where is he? And the governor says, ever since our forefathers, they were living, we're still talking about the return of this Jesus Christ. So don't waste your time about his return. This is what they were saying. Don't waste your time about his return. And uh, in verse 5, in verse 4, this is what the scoffers say. That where is his coming that he promised? Ever since our ancestors fell asleep, all things continue as they have been since the beginning of creation. And this is verse, verse 5. It says that they deliberately overlook this. So when, when, when these scoffers, when they mock at believers, okay, one thing they overlooked was the word of God, how the word of God talked about creation. They forgot to know that this world that is in existence today, the Lord spoke them out to being. The Lord spoke it into being. They forget about the things that have been mentioned here in the world. They forget about that God still does answer prayers. They forget about that God has the power he can do and undo and nobody can stop him. They forget about that because they, are desi they, are e they have evil desires. My encouragement to us is this. Listen, if you are trusting God for whatever the situation may be, please look unto the Lord and don't listen to what people say. Because people can easily talk you out of something that you are trusting and believing God for. If you are serving God I wanted to, and want to really serve God right, please follow what God says in his word. Because if you depend on your trust on man, as a matter of fact, Jeremiah chapter, I think verse 15, 7 says, that curse to anyone who put his trust in man. And then you go to verse 7, it says that, but blessed is he who put his trust in the Lord. So the scoffers, they will come, they will mock at you, they will laugh at you, did you are God. Some say these church people. One friend told me one time, that this church, what are you trying to show? We, we who used to be, we used to be Christian. I have been, before you were, I was. So what are you trying to tell me now? Oh, let me enjoy my life. This is what they will do. And unfortunately, Today, many of our young people, they are falling to this deceit. Many Christians are falling away. They, they are apostatizing from the truth. But Christians, we are reminded to hold on to the word of God. The word of God is yea and amen. Hold on to the word of God. Because God's word, it is real. It is real. Don't give up. Don't let any so-called uh, apostle... You know, they, give their, they like to give their name big, big names or preach or, 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 or bishop or whoever to tell you that Christ will not come. He will come. Jesus will come. So scoffers, 
They were on the scene in Peter's day. They will also be present today and in the future. The scoffers mocked Christ's return because many years had passed and it had not yet occurred. I heard some, uh, uh, there is a lady who really shared this to me. She said, can you imagine that? She has been trusting the Lord to get married. And one of her friends who also happened to be a Christian, in quote, told her that, how long are you still going to be waiting? The husband is not coming. Just go and get you a child. You are getting old, getting past age. Just go and have a baby with somebody. <laughs> can you imagine that? And unfortunately, some people who are weak in the faith, who don't hold on to the Lord, they might give in to such wrongful, wrongful doctrines. The scoffers, they are here. It, 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 it's, 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 it's sad to say this, but we have scoffers even in our churches today. They'll say, are you, why are you praying so much? Are you, are you, why are you trying to prove? Why are you going to church every day? Are you Jesus Christ? Why, why, why are you giving your money to church? Some Christians say that. Things are not hard. Inflation is going up. You tight? Why? Those are scoffers. They are also in churches today, unfortunately. Because Peter says that there will even be in future. You know, the devil never comes and stands and presents himself to anybody and says, I'm a devil. The devil uses those around, those close by, those loved ones. So there are scoffers out there. And then when we go to verse 5 to 7, verse 5 uh, to 7, he says this. He said, they deliberately overlooked this by the word of God. The heavens came into being long ago, and the earth was brought about from, uh, from water and true water. So this is what the heretics, they call them heretics, they argue. They argue that the world is unchanging. They argue that it will remain the same like it is now. So Christ will not come back, nothing will change, that there will be no judgment, Christ will not come. They also argue that the Lord will not return. According to them, you know, when you die, it is, it is finished. And that's why they do whatever they want because, and they fool people and deceive people uh, because all they do, they are just walking like the architect of the devil, try to uh, expand the devil's cause. Let me remind us, stand firm on the word of God, brothers and sisters. When we stand firm on the word of God, you see, the truth is the truth. The Bible says that you shall, what? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. When we hold on to the word of God, it will set us free from all these wrongful doctrines because that is the truth. There is no half truth. There is no three-quarter truth. There is no 99% truth. A truth is just a simple truth. When we know the truth and hold on to the truth, it will be difficult by God's spirit in us. It will be difficult to be talked out of that truth because that truth is life and that is God's word. So, to counter this charge, Peter took his readers thought back to creation to show them that the world had not always been orderly and that the source of the world's order was God. We know from creation. Genesis tells us that, listen, God created everything. He created everything. Peter also reminded his readers in verse 6 of the great floods that took place in Noah's day when the earth was destroyed. And I love to read that verse 6. And this is what it says. Verse 6, Peter says in verse 6, says that through this, the world of that time perished when it was flooded. So he took them, he made his readers to understand, listen, remember during the days of Noah, when the Lord allowed Noah to build an ark, and we are told that Noah, during this time, he invited other people to, to join him. The same scoffers were existing in those days, mocking at Noah, laughing at him, and Noah did not give up because he knew the truth. Noah stood firm on the word. He obeyed God because he knew the truth. Noah and some few members on, and his family, they, they stood their ground and they built the ark. And we know that after when Noah finished building the ark, of course we know that God opened the heavens and cut the ground loose and, and water was just oozing out. They know that and then there was a flood. And we know that that generation was completely wiped out because of their stubbornness and because of their rebellion. Had it been Noah listened to them, what could have happened? Had it been Noah also listened and said that no, what they were saying was correct. So therefore what I'm trying to say here is that listen, just like in the days of Noah, it's going to be even in our days today. A time is coming when, when everything will, will pause and all of us will stand in front of the Lord to give an account. But again, as, let's move forward to see what Peter says because that day that we are looking for, nobody knows. And let's see what verse 7 says. In verse 7, Peter said, by the same word, 
the present heavens and earth are stored up for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Well, good news. <laughs> no more flood. But this time, fire. I think fire is, is worse than flood. A time is coming when all these ungodly people, a time is coming when all these scoffers, a time is coming when all these people who mock at Christians, who kill Christians, all these people who, who give all these wrong doctrines and talk people out of Christians, a time is coming where their place will be in the lake of fire. That is what Peter is saying. So therefore, what he's telling us, as he was telling the Christians in those days, he said, listen, hold on to the truth that you have been taught. Hold on to that truth. Don't let it go. That is the truth. Don't listen to all this, I call them spiritual scammers, who will come and they'll tell you what it is not. Project themselves to what they are not. As some of us, some even go to mediums and take powers and come say, when they talk now, they'll hypnotize people and things that happen and they call them that they are children of God. That is fake. Please, hold on to the word of God. That's what Peter is saying. Hold on to God's own word. So God demonstrates his power and intervene in judgment in a world that otherwise seems unchanging. By the same word, he will do it again when Christ returns. Let's go to verse 8. In verse 8, Peter tells them, as he told them, he also tells us, he says that, Dear friends, I like it again. The second time in this passage, in this passage, he says, dear friends. The first one was in verse 1. He said, dear friends. Now in verse 8, he says, dear friends. Again, that shows how connected and how he loved them. He said, don't overlook this one fact. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like one day. So what was he saying here? What he's saying here is that, listen, time is not... Human time is not God's own time. God's own calendar is not human's own calendar. As a matter of fact, with God, 1,000 years is what? It's just like one day. And one day is one, like 1,000 years. So therefore, don't follow what they are saying. Christ is coming back. He is coming back. Don't listen to what they are saying. They are there just to deceive you. They are there to deceive you. They are doing the biddings of the father, the devil. Don't listen to them because God's own calendar is not like man's own calendar. You know, this applies to everything that we do, we do in life. We feel that, you know, time is passing. Oh, time is passing. There is no way I can do this. Time is passing. I'm getting old. I'm getting older. No, that is your own time and your own calendar. But God's own time and calendar is not like yours. Because Peter just told us here, he said, with God, a thousand years is like what? One day. If we can, I mean, if we are able to, if we, if we can spend some time to do some mathematics and crunch, crunch some figures here, you realize that we don't even understand what time is. We don't understand the meaning of time. So Peter says that don't listen to them. Peter noted that God views time differently than human beings do. Christ will return in accordance with the divine timetable, not ours. Did you hear that? Christ will return according to divine timetable and not ours. So brothers and sisters, whatsoever you are doing for the Lord, keep on doing, keep on moving, keep on forging ahead because Christ will come. Christ will come. He's on his way. He will come. Don't give up. Don't listen to them. And then let's go to verse 9. In verse 9, we are almost getting to the tail end very soon. In verse 9, he says that the Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. You know, it is even a bonus that Christ has not come yet. I say a bonus because God in his grace is giving some extended time for unbelievers to repent. That is why. That is why. So, Never feel that you have waited for the Lord too much. Never feel that you have waited, you put in, you, you've invested a lot of time to wait for the Lord. Because God is faithful. If he says he will do it, he will do it. And God is not man that he will lie. He's not man that will change his mind. Don't give up. Don't give up yet. Keep on trusting God. Because God's calendar is not human's calendar. 
God's timeline is not our timing. So God will do what he says he will do. And as Peter says, Christ will return in accordance with the divine timetable. With the divine timetable and not ours. So therefore, if it is a divine timetable, therefore we should not fold our hands yet. Therefore, we should not fold our slips yet. Therefore, we should keep on and keep on going and keep on doing what we are doing for the Lord because, as he says, Christ will come according to God's timetable. And this applies to anything that you are trusting God for. Don't give up. Don't give up until the Lord says so. Don't give up. Keep on trusting the Lord because his time is not our time. And lastly, let's go to verse 10. And then he says in verse 10, he says that, well, it says verse 9, the Lord does not delay this promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any of you to perish, but to come to repentance. And lastly, verse 10 says that, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, the elements will burn and be dissolved, and the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. So he is coming like a thief. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. As a matter of fact, Christ has even told his disciples many times, he says that only the Father knows. Only the Father knows. But the truth is that he will come. He will come. So don't relent your effort. God's patience towards sinners is not inexhaustible. The day of the Lord will be sudden and will catch many people unprepared. One preacher preached one time and said, that, are you ready? And I want to borrow that and ask us this evening. Are you ready for his coming? Because the thing is that he's going to come, whether we like it or not. We don't know, but he's coming. Are you ready? Are you ready for his coming? Are we ready for his coming? He is coming. So please, my plea for us this evening is that we should hold on to God's word. One good friend of mine, he's of late, he told us this. I learned this from him. He says that every human being, any level-headed thinking person, you should have one thing that you hold on to so strong that is valuable unto you. Because if there is nothing that you have that is so valuable unto you that you hold very strong, then anybody can talk you into anything and you become a trash. And that is a wise saying in that. And I believe that to us Christians, the word of God should be that thing that is valuable, which we have to hold on to it very, very strongly. Especially in times like this where there are so many false preachers and scoffers out there who are just devouring the body of believers, who are just going to extra length to do whatever they want to do just to come and destroy the body of Christ. The word of God is very powerful. The word of God, this is our weapon. This is our number one weapon. Hold on to this. You remember in Jesus' temptation in the desert, he held on to this. Do you know one thing? Jesus knew the scripture very well. The devil also knew the scripture. He will try to add slight some few things to modify and to change it. And that is what he's going to do. That's what covers are going to do. But Jesus stood his ground. He held the scripture so strongly. And he made his declaration only from the scripture. And the scripture the way it is. So therefore, we should emulate the example of Jesus Christ by holding very strong on God's own word. If you don't hold on to this, don't study it very well, then the scoffers, they are very, very sneaky, very smart. They know how to. That's why today we have all versions of Bible translation. Today there is a Bible that does not have a gender. <laughs> wow. He's coming. He's coming. Uh, I just want to add, I just want to end here this evening by just bringing some highlights from this, uh, uh, from this text, this, this, this passage. There are three things that I, I want to mention which I would love that they, they project it if they can. The first thing is that the word of God is yea and amen. What God says shall surely come to pass. Second Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. The word of God is here, amen. Whatever God says is surely going to come to pass. So hold on to the word of God. The second point is that God is not man that he would lie. Or God is not man that he should lie. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God will not tell us that Jesus Christ is coming and then, uh, after, and then at some point he changes his mind. No. His word is here and amen. And lastly, meditate on God's word day and night for you shall not be deceived. 
when we meditate on God's word day and night and hold on to the truth, we shall not be deceived because the truth will be in us. The Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. My prayer is that if you have not taken the study of the word of God, I think this is time to take it more seriously. Spend time to study that word. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you so that when you study the word of God and you go out of these covers come and trying to talk you out of the belief about Jesus' is coming, you tell them that you are wrong. You are one of those. A scoffer. Get away from me because the Bible says that he is coming. Amen. I just want to be on our feet as we pray. I just want to, you know, give this opportunity. If there's anybody here who has not met Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, just give you this opportunity to come and pray for you and show you how you will receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I want to ask that if there is anybody here who you've, you don't know how to study the Word of God, you don't know how to study the Bible, and you've never really been studying the Bible as you ought to have been doing, and you want us to pray God's grace upon your life and so that the Holy Spirit direct you on, on how to study the Word of God, please come and we'll pray for you. Is there anybody? Or is there anybody who would love to join the church? Okay. Before we pray, I just want to make this announcement. Next week we have the last African service uh, for the year. And as I was talking with the pastor, he says that we're going to have dessert, at least. That this will be uh, something to put to eat. So, because I was telling him, I, I was trying to make some concern to him that there are some two ladies, if I have to disclose this today, they might crucify me that, what is the time? But pastor said, um, there will be dessert. So, uh, we're inviting everybody on next Thursday. Please come, we'll have some good dessert. And then also invite other people. We'll pass this announcement in church on, on, on that day. Uh, maybe on Wednesday also. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we want to thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for your word, Holy Spirit, for speaking and making this very clear unto us. Father, we pray that may you give us that power, oh God. Give us that, that passion for your word that we'll spend time, invest time to feed of your word. Because when we feed off your word, heavenly Father, we'll be equipped not only to stand on the truth, but also to quickly identify false prophets. I will not give them audience for whatever doctrine they want to bring to us. We just want to thank you for this session. We pray, God, for next Sunday that, Father, may you will bless that service as we have uh, the, the combined the church uh, praise team and, and the African worship team sing together. We pray that, God, it will be an event for your own glory. We just want to thank you so much. This evening that you take us to our home safely and bless our week and uh, give us a wonderful time uh, throughout this week, Lord. Thank you again, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.